Let's take a look at some of the new features in this release. We added a badge to highlight new features in the user interface. Now when you see this badge on the ribbon or on a dialog box, it indicates something new that you might be interested in exploring further. This badge can be turned off or on from the Help menu, or by typing Highlight New in the Command window. Now let's take a look at the Views and Viewports feature. We've made some significant improvements that I think you'll really like. I'd like to create several views from this cabin floor plan and add them to a new layout. From the View tab, I'll select a new view. I'll give the view a name and select Define Window. I can zoom and pan for better detail of the area I want to show. I'll create a window around the area I want to include in my new view. When I'm done, I'll press Enter. Now that I have several views created, I'll add them to a layout. From the Layout tab, I'll select Insert View. This gives me thumbnails of the available views to insert. I'll select Floor Plan and drag it to the layout. The preview gives me an idea of the scale of the view and how it will fit on the layout. I'd like the view to be a little larger on the layout, so I'll right-click and select a larger scale from the list of available options. When I'm happy with the scale, I'll click to add the view to the layout. Next, I'd like to insert a view of this fireplace. I can see from the list of views that I don't have a view of the fireplace already created. Rather than going to Model Space and creating a new view, I can click on the New View button. Here I can create a window selection like I did when I created a new view, and place the view on the layout. This new view of the fireplace is not a named view and does not appear in the list of available views, but it is a quick way to create a view from a layout. After placing the view of the fireplace, I can see the scale is too large. I'll select the viewport and from the triangle grip select a new scale from the list of available options. We also added a grip in the center to move the view, and grips in the corners to resize the viewport without changing the scale. And now I'll add the remaining views as needed. Let's take a look at the XREF layer property overrides and see how they can be managed and reset. I'll start by opening the Layer Properties Manager to see all of the available layer properties. I'll open the Layer Settings dialog box and select Retain Overrides to XREF Layer Properties. This is the same as setting the viz retain system variable to 1. Next, I'll select the XREF layer properties I want to reload. I'll select the properties to reload when the XREF dependent layers are modified. This is the same as setting the viz retain system variable to 0. For this video, I'll select color, line type, and line weight. Remember if any of the properties have an override, the override will be shown in the current drawing. Next I'll change the layer properties in the XREF drawing. Notice the properties that don't have an override get reloaded with the new XREF layer property change, even though the viz retain system variable is set to 1. In this case, the line weight and line type properties were reloaded since they do not have an override. But color wasn't because it does have an override. This is because you can now choose the XREF layer properties using the viz retain mode system variable. This is a bitcode system variable that's used to control the properties of referenced layers. You can also use the command window to set the value of the viz retain mode system variable. 
The default value is zero, so no layer property settings will be automatically synchronized. To synchronize more than one layer property setting, enter the sum of the layer property values. You can change the values from the command line, and it updates in the layer settings dialog. Use the toggle button to change the background highlighting to see which XREF layer has overrides. You can also change the default background color from the layer settings dialog. From the tree view, use the XREF overrides filter to view the XREF layers that have overrides. And finally, you can now reset the XREF layer property overrides from the context menu. In the Layer Properties Manager, right-click on either the layer name or the layer property you want to reset, or select all layers.